Hello and welcome back to my winter cabin. Hope you've been enjoying all the recipes that have been coming out of the cabin over the last couple of weeks. And if you're looking for the perfect centerpiece for your Christmas table or a Christmas party, and the pipe jumper cake wasn't enough for you, the one that I did on Thursday, then I have got just the thing. It's gonna knock your stockings off. I'm gonna show you how to make a Rudolph cake. So I'm going to start with the antlers and each antler is going to be using a kind of satsuma sized ball of sugar paste like this which I'm going to just knead to soften it up a little bit. Now I want to divide that into three even sized balls so I'm just going to roll it into a rough fat sausage and then as evenly as possible chop it into three bits. Now each of these need to be rolled into another sausage but kind of tapering so slightly thinner at one end than the other. Now to make the antler shape, I'm going to start by lining my little sausages up next to each other. Starting with the middle one, lay it over the right hand side one, about halfway up at a slight angle. And then on the left, bring that one over again, just slightly higher. So these might stick to themselves, the sugar paste is quite tacky, but just to give it a little bit of help, I'm going to use a tiny bit of edible glue just underneath where those little antler sausages have laid. Now here comes the delicate bit because I'm going to twist the bottom part of my three sausages all at the same time. Now this is a little bit long and it's also quite scrappy at the bottom so I'm going to trim the bottom just using a small palette knife. That's looking pretty cool but it's still quite floppy so what I'm going to do is get a skewer, just a regular wooden skewer and then I'm going to just push it really carefully into the bottom of my antlers and I want to get it as far up as possible but trying not to pierce any of the outer edges. So I've made my two antlers and I'm just going to leave them on a bit of greaseproof paper just to dry out and harden a little bit while I get on with making the other bits. So the next bit I'm going to make are the eyes and these are going to be cute little eyes with little eyelashes and I'm going to start with two balls of sugar paste in yellow again. Let's see, that's kind of like a small Brussels sprout size which is ideal for Christmas. So I'm going to start by taking a piece off the end and dividing that into two. So with the bit that's remaining I'm going to roll that into a sausage again and taper it again like we did before slightly at one end and roll it until it's about two and a half inches long. Now for each eye just gently with your thumb and forefinger of both hands just shape it until it resembles an eye. Right, that's looking pretty good. So now, with the two little pea-sized blobs which I pulled off at the beginning, I'm going to roll these into pointy little sausages again, and these are going to form the kind of flick of the eyelash. So now I'm just going to stick these onto the pointy end of my eyelashes and hold them into place with a bit of glue. So once you've done your eyes, we're going to spray these and the antlers with gold, but for now, just put them with the antlers to dry out and harden a bit. And next, we need to make some ears. So I'm going to start with um, some brown sugar paste. This is actually chocolate modelling paste, um, which is also quite easy to find on online cake decorating stores. Just going to give it a little squish. And then I'm going to roll it until it's about two millimetres thick. Now I'm going to use a round cookie cutter to make circles to start with. Now using the same cookie cutter, I'm going to fashion these into a kind of oval shape just by cutting two edges either side off. And now you need to do the same thing again, but slightly smaller and with the yellow sugar paste. So now we've got our outer bit of it and our inner bit of it and we need to get them together. So I'm going to use edible glue again. I'm just going to paint the back of the yellow bit and stick it onto the brown bit. They're looking a little bit flat, so we're going to give them a bit of shape. So pick them up one at a time and starting with the pointy side, give it a little pinch. And just to help that pinch stick together, I'm just going to pop a tiny little bit of glue and just give it one last pinch. Now because this is kind of curved, ideally we want to keep it curved while it dries. So I've got this cool foamy stuff with all these kind of bumps in it. So I'm just going to keep it in there until it sets. Now the last thing we need to make is Rudolph's nose. Now sugar paste can be quite heavy and because this is going to be stuck right in his face, we don't want to make it with something really, really heavy otherwise it's going to fall out. So I'm actually going to be using Rice Krispie Treats. So I'm going to break it a little bit off and roll it into a nice tight ball. Just give it a really good squeeze. Now obviously this is not the red of the Rudolph's nose, so I'm going to cover this in red sugar paste just by rolling out a piece of sugar paste and sticking it on. So once you've covered your Rice Krispie ball, just smooth out any creases and now we need to put a stick in the end of that, so just using a shorter piece of skewer, just put it in the bottom. Now none of this is very sparkly and Christmassy at the moment, so I'm going to, starting with the nose, I'm going to add some Christmas sparkle. So I'm going to paint this with the edible glue and then dredge it in red glitter. So that's 
my nose done. Now I need to work on the ears, and they're going to be gold inside. So I've got some vodka here, and I'm going to use that to dissolve some gold luster dust, which I'm then going to use to carefully paint the yellow bit of my ears. It's just the antlers and the eyes that remain, and you can do the same thing with them, but I am actually going to take the easy way out and use a gold spray. And you can get these online. They're really cool. Give it a shake and spray away. Right, so that's all my bits and pieces ready. Now I just need to wait for these to harden and dry a little bit while I get on with making the cake. It's time to cover my cake with chocolate buttercream, and I'm using a six-layer chocolate cake. Of course, you can use whatever cake you like, um, but I'm using chocolate because chocolate and reindeer seem to go well together. And I've got some chocolate buttercream here, and if you want to learn how to make that my way, then I've got a link to that in the, in the description box below, so check that out. So make sure your icing is nice and smooth before you start working with it, otherwise you might end up with little air bubbles. So I've already crumb coated this cake, as you can see. Uh, I've done crumb coating quite a lot in various cake recipes, so go and check out my other cake, big cake videos because there'll be loads of stuff about crumb coating in there. But at this point you want to put kind of quite a generous amount of icing because you'll smooth it out later anyway. So that's my sides covered with quite a thick layer of buttercream. And now I'm just going to go around it with a cake scraper. I don't want to get it perfectly straight because I'm going to give this sides texture in a minute, but I just want to get the excess off. Now that the sides are smooth, I'm going to put some icing on the top. Now before I add the texture on the sides, I'm just going to neaten up these corners a little bit. And then using this palette knife, I'm going to start working on the sides. And it's really simple, this technique. You just kind of spin and dab with the end of your palette knife just to create little small shallow divots. So now we can get on with putting our cool decorations that we made in earlier. Now before I put the ears in, I'm going to give it a little bit of reindeer hair, because obviously reindeers have hair. Um, so I have some chocolate buttercream in a piping bag with a star nozzle. I'm going to give it a few little whippy blobs on the top of the head and slightly on the front as well. And now the ears can be put in onto those little blobs. And of course the pièce de résistance is Rudolph's red sparkly nose, so that is very important, it goes in the middle. Now he's looking pretty cute, I think you'll agree, but I'm just going to finish him off by giving him a little wreath around the bottom just with some green buttercream and some red sugar paste berries. And Rudolph is finally finished! And he looks so, so cute with his sparkly antlers and his little red nose. So don't forget there'll be loads of extra videos this month because it's Christmas, so make sure you subscribe to my channel and click on the little notification bell so you don't miss anything, and I'll see you next time. Bye!